was in Ireland, uh, I shared every time but once when the preaching was going on. We had some flannel graphs and some things, but so I thought I'd come home and preach some more. <laughs> uh, turn with me to the book of Colossians, Colossians 3. first to just look at <clears throat> Colossians 3 verse 11 to begin with where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision nor uncircumcision barbarian Scythian bond nor free but Christ is all and in all Christ is all and in all <clears throat> We can use that kind of as some sort of doctrinal uh, thing. Christ is all and in all, and use it on that. Or we can use it as some sort of future reference to what's going to be. Uh, or we can use it even in some sort of universal fullness of things, that Christ is all and in all. <clears throat> um, but Colossians 3 is really setting forth Christ in a, a real way in your personal life, setting him forth, not using this as some sort of doctrinal thing where we can go, oh yeah, Christ is all and in all, but rather um, uh, used it, using it sort of as a personal offsetting of our ways. That's basically the way it looks. And the uh, way that it's presented and the thought that is in this chapter is that the life of Christ is going to supersede with an S. Supersede. <clears throat> it's gonna supersede all, all that we were by nature. it is. You don't learn anything unless you use it right away. And I have to see the S now in my mind. <clears throat> Supersede all that we are by the nature of Adam. And is a personal uh, declaration to those that can hear it of freedom from themselves and freedom from their failures or freedom from their goodness, freedom from all the things that represent us. And uh, I, when I was in uh, Ireland this past week on Sunday morning, I shared, um, well, the title of my share is called The Altered Son, <clears throat> but we didn't use the word. <laughs> We changed the spelling, which is one problem with being my <laughs> grammatician. Uh, A L T A R E D, altered son, the altered son. <clears throat> and um, we were dealing with, and, and we did throughout the, the conference, including the women's conference that I shared on, we dealt with. Um, God, in, as Jim shared this morning, God wanting one after his kind, one in his image. And the first thing that he said after he had created regular stuff was, hey, let us, <coughs> the word Elohim there, mean, and Elohim is plural compared to Je Jehovah, which is singular. That's why it's translated, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and this is before the fall this is before satan shows up this is before trouble this is before anything else this is the height of god's heart being expressed without the influence of the fall without the influence of sin <clears throat> 
without the influence of all of these things where he can just say, this is what's on my heart. Let us make man in our image. And of course, you know, man fell. <clears throat> fell into sin and marred that image. And, uh, but on one, in one sense, it really doesn't matter if the fall happened or not. God wanted us in his image. In other words, we look at the fall and we look at the, the sin that it brought about and the failure of mankind and the, you know, the wreck of everything. And we say, oh, my God, oh, my God, we need to be in the image of Christ. We need to be conformed to Jesus because we're so wretched. You might see the fallacy in that when... God said, before there was sin, let us make man in our image. And therefore, we move the goal off of God wanting something onto our need for something to be in the image of God because we're such a mess. So we, so we, so we leave the heart of God. <clears throat> Once the fall happens, we leave the heart of God. We don't even see it. We don't, we're not even that tuned in to something that he desired from the very beginning and we begin to circulate everything around us and even though it's sin it's about our need our need us it's always focused on us it's always about us it's always um, we need the image of Christ because if we don't have it, we'll sin. Well, that's, you know, that's great, but that wasn't what was in his heart at the beginning. He, he wanted us. And he wanted us after his likeness. He wanted us in his image. And, and uh, that, was, that, that goal failed. <clears throat> but there is this reality that that we need the image of Christ not just to overshadow rank sin and terrible things we do and all this kind of stuff, but attitudes and reactions that are not his image. Okay, So I'm contrasting things that we're displaying that are clearly not his image as far as his, you know, let me just say this. In um, Philippians 2, Five, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And he begins to show forth how Jesus got lower and Jesus, in his selfless manner, took on all of these things. The real, the actual Greek word there for let this mind, the actual word for mind there is attitudes. I mean, that's the actual <laughs> and I think sometimes, particularly in Christianity, we might have people that aren't sinning per se, you know, what we would call really bad sins or whatever. But they're not in his image. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, two different things. Sinned, yes, but come short of the glory of God. And so, because we're still self-focused within Christianity, then we're focusing on um, getting rid of all the bad sins. But because we don't know his heart and what he desired out of us pertaining to one after his kind, one in his image, a counterpart like all the other animals had, Jim shared that this morning. We focus on the negative bad sins while we allow attitudes and ways that are contrary to the nature of Christ, that are contrary to his image, that are contrary to having any kind of a heart for all of sin, yes, we're all into that. 
but that we've come short of the glory of God. And you know, in, I mean, we're in Colossians, but in verse, in chapter two, actually, um, chapter one, Christ in you, the hope of glory, not Christ in you, the hope of salvation. Or Christ in you, the hope of getting rid of sin. Yes, it's, you know, yeah. But, you know, we wouldn't need, we wouldn't necessarily need Christ in us to be saved. Jesus could have come down here, died for our sins, shed his blood, rose up again and said, now, apply that blood when you do wrong. When you mess up, you got some blood there and it'll cover your sins. And that's it. But when we got born again, we received Christ in us. But we see throughout the New Testament that God is calling forth from his heart that we be conformed to the image of Christ. Um, what is it? Galatians 4.19. My little children, I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you again. I travail in birth. Um, <clears throat> you say, well, I've got the new birth. Yeah, but you don't have Christ formed in you. See? Uh, in terms of attitudes, in terms of this mind, the way it's described there in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. <clears throat> And so this statement here of Christ is all and in all, <clears throat> it, is, it is the practical bringing in of God's original intention before the fall, the thing that he wanted if, the, if sin had never happened, of overshadowing us in our image, overshadowing us in our image, in our attitudes and in our reactions. <clears throat> and, um, and has much more to do with than just receiving Jesus as our Savior, which we all have to do that. I mean, you know, but we all don't have to be conformed to the image of Christ in our nature and attitudes and ways. We don't have to. You can, you can stay saved. You're saved by grace, so that's good news. So, of course, Paul said, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And apparently he was the only one who didn't agree with that happening. Because <laughs> he said, God forbid, you're dead. That was his explanation. <clears throat> and in his mind, in, in the mind of the Lord who had this desire in his heart, when that scripture says, what shall we say? Shall we just continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid for you're dead. He looks at dead as the death of everything that is, is not his image or that is not as we shall see in a little bit, that is not the nature of Christ formed in us. Did you that? Yeah, I guess. It won't sound anything like it, but. In God's mind, death is, you know, we say, um, uh, as Paul does there, that um, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead live any longer in it? In God's mind, he's not just seeing the death of sins. He's seeing the death of the old nature, which is an idol nature or an image that is contrary to his heart and to his way. And more specifically, to what he desired from us in the beginning. Okay, so we, you know, if we're if we're unaware of his heart, if we're unaware of things that showed um, him before sin, and there's, you know, other examples actually there 
of this same thing. This isn't the only one. That verse 21, 26 in Genesis is not the only example. There are several that happen that show this heart before the fall. And there are scriptures that also show us that in the New Testament and some in the Old Testament that there was a goal. There was a goal in his heart to gather something to himself. And you see that. You see that in basically his final prayer in John 17. I pray that we may be one. He didn't pray we. I pray that they be saved. And he said, I pray that we be one, even as you and I, Father, are one. That's a, you know, <clears throat> usually we see from that, oh, we want to be one because him and the Father are one. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying even as, in, in like manner of oneness, of relationship that we have, where the, where the, <clears throat> son declares the father and you know the works that I do are not my own they're the father and the Holy Spirit comes he declares the son he will not speak of himself he declares the son and in this spirit in this spirit of selflessness that honors others uh, Philippians 2 3 through 4 prior to let this attitude be in you <clears throat> honoring others uh, one another so that everyone is honored but no one has to honor themselves. Um, no, I'm not going to say that. Um, so <clears throat> the salvation experience, <clears throat> you can say that it is similar to uh, Joshua and the children of Israel crossing over the Jordan. You could even say it goes all the way back to <clears throat> the Red Sea or the Passover, wherever you want to put it. But clearly in the wilderness, they were not conformed to his image. Remember? <clears throat> and, it, and most of the problems weren't because they were just doing rank sin. They were contrary to his nature, to his way. Okay. They were contrary to that. All right. So <clears throat> to be contrary to that, to him, because he said, let us make man in our image. He didn't say, let us make man where they won't sin or mess up. Because David sinned, amen, but the man had a heart after God. And God never forgot that. You know, he never did. And, and God knew in advance David was going to sin, but he said, before that, I will, I will set you on a throne and your seed will, because it was that image that he wanted, that which... Um, that which loved him. And you would, you'd be surprised at the amount of scriptures in the New Testament that, that say to them that love him. You'd actually be surprised. I was when I searched it out 97 years ago. <clears throat> um, so Israel... You know, let's just let's just use the example of coming out of the Red Sea, and of course that they, that's the song they sang on the other side of the Red Sea was considered it was called the Song of Redemption. <clears throat> but they wandered in the wilderness, and it was a constant contrariness to him. And they got to the edge of the land, and they went in, and they literally saw the goodness of the land, and brought back proof. It's better in here than it is out there. In other words, but there's fruitfulness and all this stuff. <clears throat> but they also saw giants. And, you know, God, you, you do realize God could have sent an earthquake or a famine or something and killed off all the, the giants before they got there. God leaves giants in our lives 
so that we learn to conform to his image so that we learn so that we have something to measure by as it were where we are at spiritually depending on how we view things and how we react if we're still the old image like in the wilderness oh god get him out of here Caleb said we are well able to overcome and he wasn't looking at himself you know and it said of Caleb he had another spirit do you know that? That he had another spirit. It wasn't the same as all of the people complaining and griping and fearful and drawing back. He had another spirit. And just like David had a heart after God, the name Caleb means wholehearted. Wholehearted. So, um, so it wasn't until they started they started coming into the land and possessing it. Possessing the land. They're, they're not just entering it. They're entering it and they're possessing. The problems that they had in the land after that, God said, remember this, before they went into the land, God said, I've already given you the land. I've already given it to you. I've already given it to you. By Christ crucified, if you understand, and spiritually how it applies to us. Jesus has already bought and paid for it and worked it all out. Okay? Go in and apply the cross. Go in and apply the victory. Go in and apply that to your attitude, you know, your uh, enemies, but it's most of our enemies are us. I've seen the enemy and it's us. <laughs> Most of us see the enemy every morning when we get up and look in the mirror. <clears throat> but, but after they got in the land, most of the problems they continued to have, they just continued to have and continued to have. I, I, I can't remember if it was here, there, or wherever. I've <laughs> sharing so much. But I, somewhere I went through all of the a bunch of the scriptures that said, and this tribe went in here, and they did this and this, but they still, le yeah, they left the Canaanites in the land, and then the next tribe did the same thing, and then the next one did the same thing. And most of that had to do with their attitudes, you know, and I mean, if you think through, a whole lot of the problems in the, in the promised land were attitudes of Israel. And that's kind of our, our deal, too. Why? Because it's so bad. Because it violates people, or it does this, or it does that. It's so bad because it falls short of the glory of God. Christ in you. The hope of glory. It falls short of Christ. It falls short of, of that... Uh, Orig you know, a good way to put that is it falls short of that original heart. We fall short of the original heart. How many people even think of it like that? But it's, this, ha this has nothing to do with theology. Like I said, this Christ all in all has nothing to do with theology or knowing deep things and deep mysteries and stuff like that. It has everything to do with our hearts finally being touched by the Holy Spirit where, where our focus begins to be off of ourselves, And then we take notice of him and we take notice of his heart. We take notice of, of things that are said that would apply to his heart instead of everything that in the Bible that applies to us. Like going into the land and saying, oh, look what we got. We took, this is our portion and we get this kind of fruit and whatever. It, it, it begins a process of Christ being revealed first, as it were, to us and then in us. Um, let me just... Let me just try to draw this out. When it comes to the image 
of God. So let's just say, let's just say God in the beginning, in Genesis 1.26, <clears throat> God wanted that which was after his kind, that which was in his image. <clears throat> All right. So he creates man, but man falls. Okay. And in so doing, he doesn't have his image. And let me just say it like this. I'll just say it like this. The board shows a circle representing God's image and man a square. But man is more than square. <laughs> he is totally not a what? A cube. A cube. Yeah. Let's see if I can add that up in math. So I was going to do a well, Roman numeral one, and then my mind flashes, and I have a weird mind. I, I thought, what's the Roman numeral for zero? Anyway, uh, uh, so the, the image of God fell, and so now you've got not just man, but mankind. Mankind after another image, and if that remains, even after you save that, in other words, let's say that there's this break off, this breakout uh, remnant that gets saved from the fallen group of mankind, and they become much more sinless, but their image never changes. Then they fulfilled, what, let's just say they fulfilled what the purpose would be. It's not the purpose. I don't even like using that word for this. But what the purpose would be in relationship to the fall. That It starts with the fall. It all starts with the fall of mankind. So they fulfill that, but they still have things that are contrary to his image. Okay? So let's look at... Um, we're still in Colossians 4, um, I'm sorry, 3, verse 4, and let me just make sure, no, 3, verse <clears throat> 12. Look at the last of verse 13, though, but Christ is all and in all, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Does anybody see anything about the image of Christ there? I mean, that list could be, okay, put verse 13, or 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, uh, or, you know, it could say, just stop sinning, stop doing these horrible things, no more, you know, rapes and murders and huge robberies and, you know, putting up all these horrible things. He's not even focusing there. He's focusing on image. He's focusing on that which is truly after his kind. A lot of this stuff is what God did <laughs> toward us. <clears throat> Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel, it is, it is the nature of God. It is, it is expressing the Lamb of God. It is expressing the being of that God put on the throne and says, don't just worship this, but be conformed to it. Become a follower of the Lamb. He says worship, in, or he doesn't say it, but chapter 5 of the book of Revelation, they're all worshiping the Lamb, but by the time you get to 14, they are following the Lamb. And then by the time you get to the end, they are married and in the image of the Lamb. They have his image. They are after his kind. It's a progression. It's a progression. And it's also an explanation of the book of Revelation. <clears throat> so, 
So he has, you know, sinless. Um, and, and see, someone could argue and say, well, wait a minute, this, this group, this, this people that got saved, they're no longer squares. They are round in that, in that they are not Adam anymore. The old nature is dead. Right? I could say that. The old nature is dead. The cross happened. The old nature is dead. You know, the, the, the normal way that we draw it, Adam, he's a little taller now. Adam, and then Christ. Don't worry, he's a little taller. God's going to cut him down right here at the cross. <clears throat> um, and so Jesus took Adam to the cross. He's crucified. He is put to death. No, you're not. As many as us of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. And so now we're in Christ, and now we're a bunch of circles. We look more like a bunch of zits, but anyway, we're, <laughs> we're a bunch of circles. We're, we have the image of Christ. I think we're closer to zits in, this, in the way that we are, in the way that we act, in the pus that's in us. Sorry, but I'm going to go with that. And, the, and all the stuff that comes out of us, and all the stuff that builds up in us, and all of the reactions. And maybe some of you are so good because you don't react. You just let it all bubble and boil on the inside. You are a glorious, unpopped zit. <clears throat> Praise God. You don't let it out. I don't know how many times you're going to have, hear me share, but it's, it's bad. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank God we rotate around here. Amen. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, Scott? Yeah, I was just thinking about Jesus' response to the rich young ruler. Mm -hmm. He knows that he's going to be judged by the Which, which sell all you have, folks, is the cross. And when I say that, let me be clear. It's not the cross that killed Adam. It's the nature of the cross or the lamb that died on the cross. It is the self-giving one who did that on the cross. You, you know, Jesus didn't need two pieces of wood to prove that he was the Lamb of God, but it is an extreme, as far as extreme, extreme example so that we could really see what the Lamb is like instead of just see that he's, you know, a Savior. He didn't have to go to that degree. He could have died any number of ways. You know? I mean, if it was just about... The shedding his blood for our sins, again, if it was just about sin, becoming sin, then, you know, <laughs> slice his finger, put it in a bowl, and put it all over us or something like that. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just saying, we have, we're all wrapped up in a view that, that teaching and stuff has given us, and we need to... We need to chunk that view, and we need to go to the Word, and, but go to the heart. Go to the heart. Go to the Lord's heart here. And you say, well, how do you do that, or what is that like? There is no, there is no prepaid <laughs> pre plan, you know, to call God. You know, there is no, there is not that. There is when the heart turns to the Lord. <clears throat> All right, so let me get rid of this. I don't know who was teaching on the chalkboard while I was gone, but this looks deep down here in the corner. I'm not, probably one. That's Levi. <laughs> well, he was a. That's the name. That's the name of the priesthood. It's got to be deep. Okay, so. <clears throat> Now, here is, here is a, but a little bit of a door into this is to realize <clears throat> that Jesus, this, this, this could be difficult for you, that Jesus 
came as, not this part, but building up to it, that Jesus came as the express image of God. Amen? Hebrews 1, 3. <clears throat> he came as the express image of God. He's the expressed image of God. He expresses the image of God. He doesn't, he doesn't just have a, a circle around him, and then we go, praise God, Adam's dead, and we're all circles. We're in the image of, no, 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 and no. And no, 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 <laughs> because all we're doing is still wrestling with sin and trying to improve ourselves instead of becoming in the image that God wants. Okay, well, so Jesus comes, and he's a, he, is the, he is the express image of God. He is, <clears throat> if you could, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe I should just take this part down too. So if you wanted God, well then it would be, let's just say within this Godhead, so this is God right here, the big circle, and then within it's three circles, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So he makes man, and, and man, when he makes man, man is... is um, Sinless. But he has not yet come to the fullness of the image God had in mind. Okay? Sinless. Okay? So, the son said after the fall, because that, you know, let's make man in our own image and then mankind falls. The son says, I will not just come clean up their mess by dealing with sin. I will be your express image and I will be in them. But again, there has to be a death. The death is not, you know, sins don't die. The old nature dies. The old image dies. But folks, again, just to come to sinlessness, the cross kills the old nature that if applied, you know, will deal with sins, but it still doesn't give us the nature, the image of God. It shows us the image of God because the lamb went there. But Christ has to come into us, okay? So then let's just make this circle the individual. He, how is it that he is in the image of God? He's, in, in this sense, he's not. He receives the image of God, which is Christ in you. So let's, let's work that out. <clears throat> this is like mathematics sometimes. Um, it is Christ in you. So how does that happen? It is now, it is the result, everything is now the result of his nature within you, his life within you. It is not the result of you being in the image of God. I'm going to keep going here, so I'm going to do some more explaining. <clears throat> it is not that you have come to the image of God, but you have received the image of God, and it is Christ. Here's the truth of that. Put on, you know, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Uh, if anyone has a quarrel against any, as Christ forgave you, so do ye also. All right. So we go, okay, well, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Most of us fall short, especially, you know, how is it that when the scripture says, and if anybody have a quarrel against any, forgive them, our mind will immediately go to people that it wasn't such a bad quarrel and we did forgive them. It never goes to the person that we can't forgive. <laughs> you know, it's like, I do that. Do you do it with this person over here? No, let's talk about over here. You know, let's focus on, you know, It's the art of 
misdirection. <laughs> We're pickpockets. <laughs> We're trying to pick God's pocket and, and point over to areas that we fall short in. Well, we fall short in all of it if it's not Christ, if it's not the image that God wants. You see what I mean? Again, we get the sin thing all in there and mixed up, and we can't seem to see through to his heart and go, it doesn't matter. You know, if you fail the law in one point, you've broken the whole thing because that represents Christ. If it's not Christ, I don't want it. That's where all that comes from. Just a picture of Christ. It's always a picture of him. And God never gets off of that. He never does. And you ought to read Colossians to see that. I mean, the whole book is really, really focused on that. So we go, all right, well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm not sinning. I'm forgiving 83% uh, of people. Maybe. What? Maybe. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I'm doing pretty good because... I know I'm doing pretty good because I look around at other people. <laughs> and in doing so, I'm doing better than they are. I mean, consider brother so-and-so, and we always go to the worst, of course. And so, see, I'm doing really good. Father never does that. He's, he's looking for the image of Christ, that you might be conformed to the image of his son. I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. That's the image that he wants formed in us, but it's Christ, okay? So, so we, um, and I'm, I'm winging a bunch of this. I don't know if you, you know that, but I'm trying to get to a point that, that I feel like is on the Lord's heart. And that is, so we say, well, if God said in the beginning let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And then he used the example, and God made it perfect, where he used the example of Adam has no counterpart. This is not good, like Jim shared. This is, you know, he created this, that's good, created this, that's good, created this, God. Only thing <clears throat> not good in the whole creation <clears throat> that was perfect with no devil and no sin. The only thing not good was that one person in that didn't have a counterpart. So God says, let's make him a bride. Let's make him a counterpart. Let's, and here is really more akin to the words, let's make him one after his kind. Happened to be a bride, happened to be his body, happened to be... <clears throat> But, you know, anybody can marry and, and, and marry a girl and call her his bride and then divorce sometime along the way because she wasn't as kind, if you will. I'm just, just I'm, I'm trying to make a point here. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not condemning anybody. <clears throat> so it's okay. Y'all go ahead and, yeah, divorce that person that's bothering you. No, not really. Cut this out. That's a joke. <clears throat> Um, um, but that's really has to, there is some real truth in there why that thing breaks down, okay? Um, and until Christ is formed, that's going to happen. You know, we get all upset and stuff. But until Christ is fully formed, stuff like that's going to happen. Amen? The goal is still Christ. Amen? Amen? The goal is the image of Christ. We keep trying to, okay, so now I'm not going to, um, I'm not, no longer going to try to quit smoking or, or stealing from the job that I work on or whatever. I'm going to, you know, try to keep my marriage together. <clears throat> Same deal. Without the image of Christ, we fail. We do. We fail. So, so back to <clears throat> Genesis. So he says, you know, let's, let's make a bride <clears throat> for him. Let's make it one after his kind. Opens his side, takes a rib out of him, <clears throat> forms Eve instead of, you know, going, 
well, we made uh, Adam from the dust of the earth. Here's a wife. He didn't do that. He didn't do it with purpose. He wanted one after his kind. He wanted one that was really out from him. <clears throat> God wants one that's really out from him. And the son is the one who said, I'll do it. <clears throat> but my point in going here um, is this. And it's a question. How is it, <clears throat> see if I can formulate it, how is it that we can be not one after Jesus' kind, using, for example, the book of Revelation. How is it that we can be the bride that is after his kind, but it's separate from him, and it's, him, it's her focusing on him, it's her lavishing her love on him, it's her <clears throat> uh, you, do you kind of see what I'm saying? I'm stumbling here, but the, I, I'm talking about two separate things. I'm talking about a bride uh, that is after his kind in his image. But that's separate from him. But everything I've said up to this point is, is that he is that image. So logically speaking, then we would say Jesus is adoring Jesus. If you follow this line, anybody, I'm glad somebody at least knows what I'm saying. How many of you really haven't caught it? Raise your hand so I can explain it. It's okay. We don't, you know. <clears throat> All right. Um, the. Let me take this down. <laughs> okay, so it comes down to we want to be after his kind. Right? So let's put, let's put Jesus here, and then let's put the bride over here. <clears throat> Where is the bride's focus? Thank you, Randy, for drawing that arrow, or we wouldn't have known. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, it's on him. And it is a desire to be after his kind, right? But in a very real sense, there's two here. So she's going to have to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm scratching around here for the right way to say these things, but she's going to have to really seek him and really desire him more than herself, which would mean a desire for the cross because that's where there's the end of all of that, but it's also not just a desire for the cross to get rid of sin. It comes from a true desire that she beholds the Lamb and follows him, like in the book of Gospel of John. <clears throat> and she, she, she considers him beautiful. Now let me qualify that. We think Jesus is beautiful because he died for us, saved us, and did all this stuff for us. But we don't conform to him because we don't really think he is beautiful. Thank you. Because if he is beautiful as lamb, then we would want that image. If he is beautiful as lamb who did stuff for us, then we don't particularly have to or want that image. Right, back to this. So, so we understand this right here. This is, this is like the woman with the alabaster box pouring out on Jesus and touching his heart because her focus isn't sin or whatever else, or ministry. <clears throat> All right, so we understand that, right? Everybody understands this little, it's not complicated, is it? Okay, but I complicated it by saying that the image in us is Christ in us. Didn't I say that? Here's how it complicates it, okay? So really, it is Christ in here. 
But is Jesus in there, in the believer, that can only have pure love or lack of self-focus, right? And then I made the statement that made all y'all kind of go, what? And that was, because that means that Jesus in us is just loving Jesus, which is the total opposite of selflessness. Right? I mean, if, that con if there's not some other answer here, then you have to come to that conclusion. There is another answer. But if there's not, then you have to, come, you know, we have to look at stuff like that. I do anyway. I have to, I want to know, I want this thing divided out by the Holy Spirit. And I don't want to just go, well, somehow it all works. And I just get a bright heart. If we don't, if we don't really understand this, then how are we going to pursue it? It's kind of like the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation begins with this, you know, blessed is he that readeth the book and he that <clears throat> um, doeth the things that are in the book. We go, yeah, that's talking about the Bible. Well, how about the book of Revelation? You can't do it unless you understand it. And most people think they do, which is, makes it an end time book. But anyway. So this can't be true on, on what we've said up to this point. It can't be true that Jesus just loves Jesus. That, you know. All right. So... So what it is? Right. See if I can do this too. Okay. This outer circle is us. This inner circle is Jesus. Or the next inner circle. Oh, let's see. That's fresh. All right. So, pertaining to the believer, the outer circle is us. The next inner circle is Jesus. And then the inner core of that is the heart. That's supposed to be an H. <clears throat> the heart that's that's ours when the heart turns to the Lord the veil is rent the heart is deceitfully wicked who can know it the heart the heart the heart David had a heart after God okay so we're discovering something here Aren't we? I mean, if we're, if we're on this road to, to give him what he wants and to be in the image that he wants, this is important. And that's why I saved it for five people. <laughs> this will change the world. <laughs> we're not trying to change the world. We're just trying to change the us here, you know. This heart situation is not Jesus. It, it is us. When the, heart, you know, when the heart turns to the Lord, the veil is rent, we see him, and then we are changed from glory to glory into that same image. But it is the formation of what the bride wants to be, changed into his same image. She wants to be in his image, right? But the only thing she really has control over is her heart. Now, in those same scriptures, it says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And it's talking about this process. Did you realize it's right there? <laughs> you know, the spirit of the Lord, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. <clears throat> and it says now the Lord is that spirit. But the truth is that the Holy Spirit is the one who has to reveal the one we love or actually because you you know you can't love them unless you know them right. you know you can love an image of them and then marry them and then find out they're nothing like that and go boy was that a mistake <laughs> 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 and that happens <clears throat> that happens a lot especially 
you know, thank, thank God for Facebook so we can find out the truth about people. <laughs> so we know exactly what we're getting. Anyway. <laughs> we have that. Anyway. Um, so, this heart turns to the Lord, and as it turns to the Lord and, and, and is pursuing him based on the work of the Spirit that is breaking them with, that's opening the word, that's beginning to reveal Christ, you're beginning to see, you're beginning to understand, but you're not yet fully conforming until the heart turns. There has to be a period of time of soaking. You go, oh my God. <laughs> and if we don't, and if, you know, whatever. Now, the good thing is, the, the thing that happened in Ireland, that ended it for all the people that were there. The rest of you, you had till the end of June. <laughs> That's secret stuff underneath. Actually, that's what was been going on the whole year, and only people here will understand that. So there is that time of soaking, and it's soaking in the Spirit, and it's soaking in the Word, and the Spirit is leading that soaking, and He is, he is, he is tenderizing us so that we're more sensitive toward Jesus so that we're more open so that when he begins to open the word to show us something we don't immediately just see ourselves because he's breaking us from ourselves now the full work of that doesn't happen until Christ is formed in us and he's that nature and he's that image but there has to be a time where and that time is not you know, two days or two weeks, and that's why we spent this past year. And actually, you know how, much, how long the time has been to bring us to this? The whole time new creation has been going. How many years is that? 35? 82. All right. The whole purpose of this place has always been to know him and to show him. Does that sound familiar? That's our motto or whatever, to know him and to show him. Not just to know him or to, and to make him known, to know him and to show him. And so this, this time of soaking, uh, and uh, this year particularly, we've said, this year is not going to be about us. It's not going to be about others. It's not going to be about us for others. We are making a stand. We are, anybody remember that at the very beginning? Good. And we meant it, didn't we? And as we set ourselves on this course, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit comes alongside. And he begins, and this is what Jesus said he would do. Jesus is the one who called him the paraclete. And the word paraclete means to come alongside. And he comes alongside, and Jesus said, he will take that which is mine and show it unto you. He will reveal me to you. And, and there is a revealing of him to us before there's a revealing of him in us. You can't have him revealed in us unless you know who it is you're wanting. And if you think it's Jesus, the mighty warrior that defeated everybody and slaughtered all the enemies and stuff like that, you're wrong. He died on a cross. He died. He, he was beaten and defeated in every sense of the word outwardly. And yet that, the weakness of God is stronger than men because the weakness of God is the power of God. Okay. So who is going to discover that Jesus? I mean, where are you going to get that wild, completely opposite view of him? You're, you're only going to get it. You might hear it from somebody, but you're only going to get it from the Holy Spirit. And you're only going to get it by concerted time of letting him come alongside and reveal Christ and contrast. I'm telling you, the contrast is, is one of the most important things. 
And the contrast doesn't work if you only have it, you know, once every six months or once every three months or something like that, you know. They that were of Berea were more noble than they of Thessalonica in that they searched the scriptures daily to find out what, the, what was in the word was true. And so, that, and, and God put it in there and he said, they're more noble. Well, what was their nobility? They, they kept at it. They didn't just do it a few times and then slip away. Jesus grabs three, uh, 12 disciples and it's three and a half years of saying, this is it, this is it, this is it. Listen, listen. And even at the end of that, did they have it? No. It took the Holy Spirit. But they had the preparations. And you have to soak. And you have to soak. And so, so this, this heart soaks and it soaks and it soaks and it soaks. And it's the Spirit. The Spirit is, is giving liberty of understanding but not liberty of nature yet. It it's hasn't revealed. But as it soaks, then the Holy Spirit begins to rent the veil and you see what was behind in the Holy of Holies, what's always been there. You served it, but you didn't know there was a lamb on a throne. You served it like, like, the, like the priest. They served in the outer court. They served in the, the holy place, but they never saw what it was that they served. Therefore, the veil was never rent, and they were never changed into that image. You all following this? Yes. It never happened. It never happened. And so what happens with Israel? They fall short. So Paul is warning, this is the process. This is how you get the veil in. This is how you break with the old covenant ways of just serving God, but not what I call memorial ministry. And, and uh, so as that happens, then eventually that veil is rent and you see him as he is and we shall see him as he is. We'll be like him. That, does it not say that? Is that open? First John 3, 2 or something like that? Yeah. Um, and then First Corinthians or 2 Corinthians 3.18. When the heart turns, the veil is rent, and we see him, and we are changed from, le from one level of glory to the other. Oh, my God. And that change is this inner reality of Christ as nature. Christ as nature, or the express image of God, the only image that will truly express God. Okay. And so, but the, but the heart is the key there. So you have David, a man after God's heart, spoken of, you know, more highly than anyone almost. Not because he was sinless, not because everything was perfect, but because he was fulfilling what God wanted from the very beginning. God loved it. Somebody got their eyes off themselves. Father, we ask you to just move by your spirit and continue for those hearts that desire you, that, that seek you, that want you beyond uh, where they are now. We, I ask you to continue to move on us and not let us up, and not let our hearts stray, and not let our hearts grow cold, but to stay tender, and even increase that if it's your will, so that there be a greater renting of the veil, a greater comprehension of that which we are meant to conform to, your Son, Lamb of God, we ask in